Hello, this is a short video just to introduce the idea of using sub-circuits in our Logisim projects uh, for COS1004 computer systems. Uh, this I am primarily um, showing because it will probably be really useful for the assignment work that you're about to do. Uh, but in general, it's something that you should consider where you're designing circuits that are certainly beyond simple, simple circuits. Uh, it's, a, it's a really great way to, to create modularity in your circuits and also keep the layout of your circuits nice and reasonable and readable. Uh, the analogy here would be for those of you who have done some programming already or who are learning it at the moment, you will have started to learn or have learned about things like functions, right? In, in programming, we tend to break up our, our programs into subroutines or functions or um, um, uh, procedures. You know, we have different names for them. Ultimately, what we try to do is break it down into smaller and smaller problems. You should absolutely be thinking the same way about how you design your circuits, particularly when you're talking about building up over multiple you know, stages or parts, um, thinking about how you build up units of functionality, testing those things, making sure they work, and then integrating that or building upon that uh, up to the next thing you need to do. And sub-circuits are a great way to, to manage all of that. So the example I'm gonna go through here is really straightforward, simple. It's very artificial and not at all uh, um, trying to be a, a real example of how you would use it, but it's going to show you the basics of how to how to create yourself sub circuits and use them appropriately. So as you can see on on the um, on the screen, I've got here just a simple circuit. It's a it's an AND gate with two pins. Uh, these pins are of course feeding in values to the AND gate, and the AND gate of course says yes, it's on when both of the inputs are on. Uh, if either of them is off or both of them are off, then clearly, of course, it's not going to light up the LED, just like an AND gate should. So this is all the circuit is, absolutely basic circuit. Now, the first thing to point out uh, is these pins that I'm using here. Now, we've been using these pins a lot, uh, and we primarily use them just to sort of do what I did then, right? Show how the inputs change the circuit and make the output change. In general, though, what pins are actually used for in circuit design is to allow one sub-circuit to communicate with another part, or another sub-circuit. So essentially, these are um, a little portals, if you like, between sub-circuits. Uh, and so we can actually make them as inputs or output pins. And we're going to talk a bit more about that in the context of um, this example in a second. But just know that so far, we've really only been working with them as input pins and where we have been giving the input by clicking on them. But that in general is not how they're meant to be used. That's just simply a convenience that we've um, used to, to show examples. The main thing though that I wanna show is how do we create sub-circuits uh, and use sub-circuits? So what I'm gonna do is let's just say, imagine that instead of doing this simple AND gate thing here, I'm gonna take that wire away and I want to add some functionality here so that the output here ultimately is the result of whatever that functionality is. However, that's, that functionality I'm going to implement in a sub-circuit and then import that sub-circuit into this circuit and then essentially be able to just call that sub-circuit to do what it has to do, get its output, and then feed that into this LED. So the first thing I'll do is create a sub-circuit to design it on. So what I'm gonna do is click up here on the untitled, uh, the top label here, right click on it, click add circuit, and then I'm gonna give it a name, which I'll call demo, just because that's what it is. And that creates me a whole new workspace that I can do my uh, my sub-circuit design on. Notice now that demo has been added to the list up here and main is still there as it was. And if I double click on main, I go back to the, um, the main circuit as it was. So it's still there. It's now that I've got a new sub-circuit. Now I'm gonna do something really simple, right? Just to keep things simple. I'm just gonna bring in a, a pin. I'm just gonna put this down. I'm gonna do a really straightforward, um, it's just a not gate. And what I'm also gonna do is add another pin here. 
and I'm going to just make it face the other direction so it's west facing and then just connect it up. Now, of course, it's going to complain at the moment because this pin is just like this pin is considered an input pin. But I'm saying at the moment, I'm feeding output of this gate into this input pin, which sounds completely ridiculous. And it is ridiculous. You can't do that. However, what we can do is actually tell Logisim that this pin is not an input pin. It is an output pin. And we do that by, if we come down here, you'll see output with a question mark, yes or no. So by default, it will be no, but I'm going to say this time it's yes. And you'll see that when I do that, it actually changes its appearance. It's now an output pin. So what does that mean? This means that what we feed this pin is something that can be read by another circuit if we import this sub-circuit into that circuit. And we'll see how we use that in a second. What it also means is that this pin here, the input pin, is a pin that can be given input from another circuit. Now, the way we make all of that work is we first need to give these pins meaningful names, labels that we can um, identify and know when we want to integrate them. So I'll just do that now. I click on that, and if I go down to label and click on it, you'll see here that it opens up the text field for me to enter a name. So I'm just going to call this input A for want of a better name and make sure you actually hit enter. If you don't hit enter, um, it will ignore what you've done. You must enter um, to actually have it uh, execute that. So now you can see it's included the input A label and it actually refers to this pin now as input A. And I'm going to click on the output one and do the same thing. I'm going to give it a label, but obviously this time a different label, and we must have unique labels. This is very much like variable naming in programming, right? So output, I'm just going to call that output A. And there we go. So what this is saying is that this sub-circuit takes a single input, applies this gate, which obviously is just a not gate, and then feeds the output of that to the output pin. And that's all I'm going to do for this. It's a really simple, simple example. This is not, of course, a, a very realistic example of why we would use subcircuits. We would do something more, more involved than this, but it's just showing you how it works. So now if I go back to my main, so that's demo, right? So this is all inside the demo subcircuit. If I go back to main, what I can actually do now, if I want to use the functionality of that subcircuit, I can simply click on it and drag it in like this. And you'll see something like this appear. I'll just make a bit of space for it. And now, as you can see here, there are, there are actual little pins to connect to for input A and output A. So clearly, if I want to use the, the functionality of this sub-circuit that I've just created, I can feed input by connecting up the input and I can obviously connect up the output. And in doing that, you can already see that it's already working, right? Because now, even though the AND gate has got two false inputs, as in two off inputs, we would expect the AND gate to have an output of off or false. But because we know what the demo is doing, it's negating that, which means, of course, that the output is on. And so that is actually working exactly as we would expect. And of course, if I change the input to like that or put them both on, then that's essentially off. So that's exactly what we would expect to happen for this very, very simple circuit. A couple more points to make about this. I can have more than one input. I can have as many inputs and as many outputs as I like. Um, so all I do is add more pins. So if I, for example, just added a few more pins in, and I'm not going to do anything meaningful with these, I'm just going to add them in and give them a name. And so here, again, sometimes you might get a dialog box instead of that text entry coming up. Either way, you enter the name in. Input B, I'm going to do the same for this one. And here it is again. So input C. I might just keep a single output for now. If I go back to my 
main one now, you'll see that they've added those in, input B and input C. Now, I haven't actually done anything with those inputs, but they are there and they can be um, connected to. Uh, and if I wanted to do more sophisticated things, then of course I could I could wire all that up inside the demo. And there's nothing to stop me adding more and more subcircuits. So I could, for example, add another subcircuit, um, so say demo two, and it would create a whole other subcircuit. And inside that, I could be creating things. You know, I'll just put some pins in there. I'll put an input and an output pin again. Uh, let's just call this one the output one. Um, if I can, I oh, know I've got to give it a name first. So here is output B this time. And here is, oh, what am I doing there? That's the wrong one. This is still an input. This should be an output. Sorry, I didn't actually say it was an output. There we go. And let's give this a label. So it will be input, um, I don't know, I'll just call this input, um, uh, I don't know what we're up to, input C maybe, or D. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not really trying to do anything meaningful. I'm just going to connect these guys up just so that they are actually wired and I'm not trying to be neat. So that's another demo. I, I've created another sub-circuit. And for example, now inside, for example, this one, I could bring in another sub-circuit like demo two, or I could have brought it into the main one, right? I'm free to include as many of these sub-circuits as I like, anywhere else I like, and I can make multiple copies of them, okay? I can bring in, for example, there's nothing stopping me bringing in a whole other sub-circuit that's the same as the previous one I've already added, all right? So I can duplicate circuits. So this is how you can start to think about how you design your circuits. If you get those modular parts right and you design them well and you test them thoroughly so that you know and trust that they work, then you can actually build up from that in a much more systematic and structured way and create circuits that are actually highly readable because at the end, if you give meaningful names to these sub-circuits and you add labels that are meaningful, then your circuits become a lot more interpretable and easier to debug as well. Um, and that's all part of that process. So definitely for the assignment, you should consider uh, using sub-circuits. It's a great way to manage the complexity. Um, you know, these examples here are really just artificial ones. You yourselves can have a go yourself and play around. Ask your tutors for help if you need it uh, or go to a consultation session if you need to have somebody talk through it a bit more in detail with you. Um, that's all for now and, and good luck with the assignment and with the rest of your lab work um, in computer systems.